uh, compounding growth and um, from uh, the front page of that presentation, there are some lessons that we can pick there. So what is it that you know? What is it that skill that you have? Uh, you are probably like myself, an accountant. And uh, what experience did you get after college? So you got to first FMCG, we call it first moving consumer goods. That is the experience of accounting that you have. And uh, every other time you have always searched for jobs in, in line of that. So you are a payroll accountant and that is your line or a tax accountant. So that is the skill you have and you maintain that. We would say that is your principle. What of if you would venture outside you the comfort zone to add more skills into that? Right now, we have people embracing technologies. Those who are in accounting or whatever field you are, those who are in accounting, we had used QuickBooks, Sage Pastel in the past. Right now, you gotta have to like continue adding these skills onto your learning, like learn more of these new uh, skills that are coming, computerized accounting app applications, so that you remain relevant. So most people, when we have talked about investments, they have like, I've met so many people asking me, what should I do with my 5,000? And I have been brutal in telling someone, okay, 5,000, yeah probably, can we go back to school? Can you be able to learn a skill or two? Can you learn graphic design? Can you learn data analysis? You add into whatever you have so that you're able to blow them. So you could be having your principle of 5,000 today. If you let it stay, then we have that, whether it is year one or in year 30. But if you invest, that principle, then you earn the simple interest. Yeah, you can see the second curve. Then if you let compounding effects work for you, then you can see uh, the legion in light blue. So you can see how that goes. And uh, we have just been created to get better. So we are not in this world to do anything else. We are just here to get better. So if you are a mentor, how many people have you able to have you been able to mentor? Uh, like what is the number that you are checking out? So if you are whatever workplace you are, you are a social worker, what other skills are you bringing up to be able to achieve more in, in respect to whatever you are doing? So when we talk about investing, when we talk about growth, uh, let it not be about money only, because what we have seen right now is the challenge. Right now, so many people, we are talking about chat GBT, especially writers. We have grown to be a very big gig economy, and uh, so many writers, we are, well, this chat GBT has come to like disrupt the industry. When you got started, in the year 2015, what more skills have you been picking up to be able to give yourself chances? The reason why we want to compound is to be able to give ourselves chances because lane days, those is what I term as risks, are inevitable to happen. So anything, anything would happen, like we'll get disruptions in our area of work. You have invested maybe in a fund and that fund collapses. So if you have been able to give your chances, you are able to give yourself a fighting chance. So that teenage, let it remain at the back of your mind that if you are investing your principal and put the principal there is putting your money in the mattress, the mattress bank. So I let it, my money stay there, it is safe. It is not at the bank, so I won't lose it. Uh, if the bank collapses, it is not with a fund manager. A fund manager would lose my money. It is not uh, in land because uh, Lily Estate is a bubble that is about to burst. And I don't know where we get this kind of things uh, that we keep telling ourselves the economy will collapse. It has collapsed. It has been collapsing. It is not the first time. So I think it will just be okay for us to uh, 
get educated. We have done so many sessions. I would encourage going to the uh, group, especially those who are on 52, and citing several videos that we have looked at that are able to push you from being this person who is really least averse. Well, our research says that financial illiteracy, I think I was sharing this with our current uh, personal finance class. The person who is financially illiterate would be very aggressive in risks out of ignorance. So someone who doesn't know how maybe the world of crypto works would just be willing to take the uh, 5 million put into a crypto that is coming up and maybe probably they lose all this money because as you have known, we have uh, crypto 92% of the initial coin offerings uh, like going bust. So you we are offered at $2 and then kaput in a year or so we don't have anything. So the person who is financially illiterate is aggressive, taking very high risk investment options out of ignorance, ignorance in a very kind way that we don't want to uh, be loaded. Then there is the person again, who is financially illiterate and is very conservative, very risk averse because they didn't know that uh, lack of financial literacy do not tell them that they can put their money in a fixed deposit account with a bank and nine percent annually and their cash is safe with uh, out of depositors insurance and a central bank the control they have over the commercial banks the this person is illiterate that they don't have that know that there's this kind of option so Please go back to those videos, watch, educate yourself, so that you're not there saying, oh, I'm risk averse. Uh, but if we were to check onto what the real issue is, we would find it is financial illiteracy. So uh, this is something that uh, probably we, would, we can encourage. I think I don't want to go back to introducing myself because I have already done that. So. You know Kipchoge, Eriud, and I know him, and probably everybody else in this room knows him. And uh, he has won marathons back to back, I think 2020, 2021, uh, 2022, winning marathons, Ladder Marathon, Boston Marathon, back to back. Uh, and we have been very proud. Um, Probably you have seen Mele Mola if you are interested in athletics, because this is something that uh, I think it is my part time activity, not learning, but following up on <laughs> following up on these athletes. Probably you could be knowing of Mele Mola. Do, did these people come up and start winning immediately? That would be the big question. I saw Liz and Trey, people celebrating Mele Mola, and I was like, okay, at flight. Now, since she had won, I think it is a diamond league. Right now, people would be willing to, this is a brand that we want to be associated with. Well, let me take you back to 2017 when we had the world under 18. Mary Mola then in high school was participating in the world under 18. And it was not her first time learning. So what I'm getting to that even the marathon learner who has the skill, of course, has had to take time training, participating over a period like Mele Mola. I think I first uh, saw her in 2017, and it is only now in 2022, 2023 that I'm hearing she has won something in the global arena. And I'm not expecting her probably, and I'm not limiting her, but I'm not quick asking her to win an Olympic gold in the next two or three years, probably in the next three, four, five years, then we can, I can expect a gold, uh, uh, a gold uh, from the Olympic by her. So are you very patient in regards to your investments or do you want to put in 100,000 today and earn 200, double it to 200 in the next one year. 
if that happens, then we would say probably uh, we are a little over ambitious because every other thing that we have done in our lives, whether it was building muscles in the gym, whether it was winning the marathon, whether it was cooking, getting better at cooking, it is not something that uh, you wake up and do it today because that would like bit okay, there are some like a few who are able to do that. But for majority of us, we have had to build this over time. I mentioned about Kipchoge, probably someone can look at the history and look at how long this person has been in that, probably the first time they participated in a national event here in Kenya and calculate the number of years so that we can start saying, okay, if I'm investing, I um, have an outlook of 20 years or that years because we have seen this is the ideal time for someone to like grow to be that kind of a blend. So if you are banking on a marathon or you are banking on investing, then me and you know that we have a track record. Uh, we have a journey that has been set for us that we can pursue. And uh, yeah, winning a marathon is not a one day affair. So investment too will not. We have shared stories of success. So you hear, I think uh, uh, some of, my clients, you hear someone saying, uh, maybe we can share these stories, but again, we will talk about this. Um, you find someone has an investment portfolio of 50 million, and this is not something that has been done today. So how did you make your 30 million? And you hear them telling them, you, we launched our business in the year 205. Like we have done that over time, but, uh, Probably, and we'll talk about the microwave effect, uh, where we want to put our food in the microwave at 10 minutes uh, at most, five minutes, two minutes, uh, the tea is ready and it is ready for consumption. So this is something that we would want to uh, look at. So um, compounding growth is this concept of putting in 100,000, earning returns on the 100,000, and you have earned the interest of 10,000, then you earn on both the principal and the interest. The richest man in Babylon talks about this beautifully saying, I did put my gold into labor. So the literal money that you have, the investment that you have. So what have you invested in? And we have talked about there's so many options that we have. And I said, these government securities, of course they have risks. And people are continuing to invest in them because the people who are investing in them know something that we don't know, that I'll put in 100,000 in a bond that pays me net 14%. So I have 14,000 per year. And then the 14,000 per year is what I use to reinvest. So I did put my gold into labor. And then this slave, the gold, bears children. And then I put back the children to labor for me where I create what we call a lipo effect or a chain reaction. So it was 100,000 in a bond pays you 14,000. 14,000, you go to the stock market with it. You earn a modest dividend yield of 10%. Then you plow back that, probably you get more shares. You have your investments, whatever the interest you have earned from this, growing from to around maybe 50,000, putting that in a fund that probably earns you 12%, you continue like that. And this is where we say you, have, you are earning interest on both the initial investment and the accumulated uh, returns over now the period of time. So you are earning interest on now 114,000 in the second year. And the third year we are talking of earning interest on 114 plus the interest from 100, that is 14, plus the interest from the 14, which is 1,400. We'll do the mathematics, so, but I hope you get that, that this is what we talk about compounding. And I liked uh, Felista because you brought in some uh, someone else who is talking about this attitude that we have. 
I only have one million to invest. And I have always asked people, yeah, you, someone leaches out, I want to invest one million. Then the question comes, okay, is it the only one million that you have? You don't have potential of earning more money because we'd have to talk about, yeah, I have one million to invest, though I have the potential of earning 100,000 or 50,000 every month, what can I pursue? Because this uh, is will be able to give me an aspect of what is it that you can get into and probably continue pumping in some little money or even what the investment option we choose, you still have some revenues coming in that are able to sustain you because most of us, and we have said this again and again, the feeling of wealth produces wealth. You tell people in this room, we tell the 14 of us here in this room, like how much do you want to invest in this particular fund that is paying 13%? An example, we are just doing an example. And then you hear people talking of 50,000, 100,000. It is in an example, it is in a dream. So if you in your dream, you are thinking of 50,000, 100,000, then there would be that question of where do you see yourself in, in the next one year, two years. Like, be very confident that uh, in the next two years, my investment fund, so I'm starting today with 100,000, but I'm growing this to 1.1 million within the next two, three years because I can continue topping up. So compounding growth, you earn interest on the initial and the returns. And if it were possible for you to continue adding what we call small, consistent, gradual steps. So every three months, I know towards this investment fund, I always put 50,000, 100,000. Every three months, I'm putting in 250,000. So you had the initial, you have the interest coming in and you are putting in uh, more something. Then this, when you look at it uh, today and 10 years from today, these will make a very, very huge, significant difference. And uh, I have talked about the example. So you have, uh, like, let's say, 100,000. Uh, in the first year, you are earning interest on 100,000. That is on the initial amount. And then in subsequent years, we are topping up. So it is 100. Then you have some 14,000 from it. So you're earning interest on 114. So this makes such a big effect and accelerating the growth, which creates a snowball effect that will significantly boost your wealth. Uh, saying that uh, when you look uh, in the past and you hear someone say, well, my investment is uh, has grown to 20 million. We admire that. But the pain stacking uh, stuff of getting started, pushing in something little is where we say we draw the line. That is not very really interesting to us because we, most of us like the story of success. So yeah, Omanyala won this list, but the many times that uh, he went for training the many times that he has lost, that story is not really beautiful. So today at 100,000, and then we are topping up 30,000 every month, that is not a very beautiful story. Probably the best thing that then we can do is staying with the image of the finish line. So I want to have built uh, an investment worth probably, 30 million, then we can stay with the end, the success in the back of our mind so that this motivates us to continue working today. And not only looking at the final destination where we want to be, but also we're looking at the worst case scenario. So what if you didn't? Having that image so that, uh, you don't want to go back to the worst case scenario, that image that you have, like if you don't do this for yourself, you don't, if you, if you don't put in the 100,000 today, yeah, like what would happen in the next year? You have some income today. What would happen um, 
if you have lost that income, probably you are not saving in the next 30 years. What will that look like? We have had data from people who are in uh, retirement planning. They are saying a majority of us, only 6% of us are the people who are going to retirement, very comfortable, very prepared. Uh, they have income that can sustain them. The rest of us, we have to work in retirement. So someone quit, uh, left, leaves their job at 60, they have to start hardware. Someone leaves the uh, job at 60, uh, they were a teacher, probably they have to get a side gig uh, because we, we are not very prepared. Uh, so those are, we are not working to keep ourselves busy. We are working to earn an income because we don't have something to sustain us. Others who are not even uh, lucky to get to work or they don't have these kind of opportunities, we become dependent. And uh, we have said, uh, like this generation is really, really uh, talking about black tax, like uh, folks depending on uh, this generation. And uh, then the big question comes in is, what measures is this generation putting in place so that they don't become dependent on the generation that is coming? So if you are thinking in those lines, then this is what you need to pursue. And we are not here like to promote any type of investment. We have said they are not in competition. So whatever it is that you are doing, whether you are you consider to do contribute in the circle on this fund by collective investment schemes, or you go to little estate or whatever, you just exercise your due diligence and then get consistent in that. So LIPO effects and uh, have seen like push a pebble in the pod, and water starts creating what we call LIPOs, small ones. And they would these expand and amplify as they spread with time. So this is what we are talking about compounding. You start modestly. So the first year, 14,000, that, that doesn't look like a change. And actually, I'll go open a discussion on any public forum. Say you can invest 100,000 and earn 12,000, 14,000. And majority of the people will tell you that is a small interest, okay? But go on the same public forum and say that you can invest 10 million at 12% or 14%. This is how much you expect. And everybody else is wow, wow, because we like that big, but how do we get there? So we're gonna have to start some from somewhere so that we can make, gather momentum and let this now expand to that growth that uh, we we wish to have. So having thought of compounding interest, we're gonna have to have this long-term mindset. And this is not about the quick wins and instant gratification. So, how much a hundred thousand and you can double that. And think of this uh, about the quick wins. How many people uh, have lost money in these schemes where we have been told, I think the scheme that uh, I got to think about was public likes. I think this was in the year 2016 or 2017, because uh, two of my relatives, uh, my cousins, younger cousins, I got into it and it was to them it was the best thing that happened uh and the the initial the list account you would put in four thousand or something uh now i've known because uh, they were really into it and uh, they are talking excitedly about it uh in regards to if you put in four thousand and you are earning this much and you do this because I think it is double or triple or whatever, within a short period, then you have like had a big chunk of money and uh, you have escaped all this hard work. You have escaped all these uh, issues to do with life. So you don't have to work, you don't have to do anything. This is what we call quick wins and instant gratification. So from then, 
we have had so many of those kind of schemes, well, crypto mining, all these kind of schemes that well, at the back of our minds, we tell ourselves can make us uh, leech uh, in a fortnight. So a small percentage, the lucky few who joined early and left are the only people who uh, make money from these schemes. So if you think of the much money that we have lost in these schemes, I know someone, someone known to me loses, I think 500,000. This was in the year 2021 or 2020. So you don't have the 500, but think of the 500 in the next 20 years, what uh, change would they have made? Because the instant wins, uh, come with a cost that we would want to think about. I, I think I lost count. I have not even considered these uh, schemes because uh, it is a sad state of affair. Okay, fine. The individual lost 4,000, 5,000, 10,000, or 100,000. But for us, from where we are looking at all these schemes, we are talking about the billions of money so you hear this scheme has gone down with around 1.2 billion. You hear these other scheme have gone down, investors have lost 2 billion. So when we look at that over a period of time and we look at the billions that have been lost, then this uh, does not create a very impressive um, picture. So we say, we don't, we don't lack opportunities. We have opportunities. Yeah, I have 4,000, 4,000 that can go to Gekomba and get started in my, a drift shop, uh, maybe online or whatever, but I want to double this uh, overnight without having to leave the house. I just need internet and I think this is okay. So I, from where we are looking at, maybe probably we can agree today that patience, persistence and understanding what uh, your investment is all about and the potential that the event from investment has over an extended period of time. So yes, do you want to get into business with your 4,000? That would be a smart move where you get to work. Do you want to maybe get started with contributing these small amounts in the circle? This would uh, be better. So we have what we call a microwave mentality and where we have been accustomed to quick results. And this generation compared to the previous generations is this is really really affecting us and when spotting spot betting came uh into that should be a luxury uh let me just say that it is not uh, it should not be like a way to like get uh, leech when spot betting came into the country uh one of those popular brands launched here around i think 2014 uh, the fever starting catching up and uh, people uh, we are really uh, catching the fever so even those around me I think I, I, I had this conversation with someone who uh, we have had this kind of conversation and the, the question was what is the probability of you probably winning a jackpot so the jackpot has that in games what is the probability from a mathematics perspective from a mathematical perspective so if you have that in games the probability is one out of one million and five hundred and ninety something possibilities the possibilities that these games can win you a uh, jackpot that in of them so if you were to place this bet each one of them probably one million five hundred and ninety something possibilities so if you place one the possibility is what is the chance of that we know a better way a better chance of doing that and this is in regards to compounding growth i will just give a little life examples and because uh, when we have given this people have added up saying wow yeah this is impressive so what is the opportunity that you have been granted? What is it that you have been given a resource, an opportunity that you have been granted? Norway was granted oil. Probably have not been granted 
oil, you have been granted a skill like me, you can coach people financially. And how much is that making you? Probably monthly. And how long will you be into that? So someone else is into business before, you know, these businesses, seven years, uh, five years, seven years, 10 years, we have slowed it down. We have looked at the life uh, span of a business. Uh, it reaches somewhere and if we don't continue to innovate, so even competition comes up, we start uh, going down in terms of growth. So what is it that opportunity that you have? One of my youngest clients, um, a 23 year old is launching business the best way possible. Like someone who is able to make a hundred thousand a month. Another younger client of mine, 26 year old, they get an opportunity, a job opportunity, uh, not even a job opportunity because they are learning, it's due fellowship or whatever. Uh, and they get compensated $500 a month. We are talking about $700 at an exchange rate of 140. And these opportunities only lasting them for an year. If there is an extension, it is not about them. So it is about the who person who is offering to offer the extension. So these are the people we tell and you yourself today who has an opportunity. We say, whatever opportunity you have today, maybe you can think in line with what Nolwe thought. Because they say we have oil and this is something that we don't know how long it lasts until we exhaust. We cannot get more oil. But put off and think of African countries. We get oil, we want to sell it and use these uh, proceeds to fund our recurrent expenditures and all that. So this country says, okay, we have been developing uh, by other resources. So if you have oil now here, what we do is let's develop by the oil, the proceeds from the oil, let's put up a fund that in future, when we have exhausted this uh, resource, we have something to show out of it. So by June 2023, 20, this fund, the net present value was around 1.4 trillion US dollars, three times the size of the economy. And uh, in the six months, this fund has earned Norway in Kenya shilling, 14 trillion. In Kenya shilling, 14 trillion. That is what they have, this fund has earned uh, in, in six months. So what has happened, this, what we are talking about compounding growth is whatever we earn from this fund, we plow it back. And then the inflows from uh, the oil projects we put into that. So the net inflow from oil, we are at around 35.8. So that's out of 1.4 trillion, what they have contributed into the fund is around 35.8. And 64.2 has been and cumulative returns from that particular fund. So, yeah, big numbers that are very exciting to us. Probably how much am I about to, this has been in from 1990 to today, we are talking about 32, 33 years. Uh, if you told someone to fix 150,000 today in a fixed income fund, and the majority of these kind of funds in Kenya, we have all these collective investment schemes. I will <clears throat> just mention a few who I don't have uh, affiliation with, uh, so I'm not actually marketing them. So we have CIC, they have a collective investment scheme. We have NCBA, uh, we, they have a collective investment scheme. We have Sunlam who have a collective investment scheme. We have ICA Lion who have a collective investment scheme. So all these companies are offering Apart from the money market fund that you know, they have a fixed income fund. Look at the past results so that you can tell where we say probably a net of 11% per annum. And then 
the, they distribute the income semi-annually. So we plow back and we compound that semi-annually. So if you were to invest 150,000 without top-ups, we are talking about 3.5 in the next 30 years. So how old is the, the average age of a participant in this session? We'll just take 30 years, majority of those uh, participants who are coming to our session. <laughs> 30 years, so in the next 30 years, you're headed to your retirement. So you started with 150, you have 3.5 constant without further top ups. You could make this way better if you are topping up. Like let's say you have 150 and then you are topping up every month 20 or 30, then you can have something to yourself that by the time you are going to retirement, you can say, well, I have something for my retirement that I don't probably need to bother my uh, my, my kids. Uh, when they have said that uh, this generation is, I hope the veganess that uh, we are castigating with black tax is the same energy that we put into like saying, I don't want to be the person who will be asking for my kids for support. That is, if you you are, I have this energy towards black tax, then the same energy I should put into what's telling people, let's invest, let's get better. So we have, an opportunity, we have choices, so many of those that we can apply, we can utilize, and they will be life-changing by the time that uh, an individual sits with themselves. Uh, in the next probably 20 years, they can say, well, I'm proud of what I'm have, I've been able to do. This is 150. Um, if myself and one of the participants in this session, we agreed to spend 150, probably uh, over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, probably by Saturday evening, we might not have money because an air ticket for two from here to Mombasa, uh, checking ourselves into a restaurant, like meals, a drink, or whatever. Uh, how many sites will we have visited by the time we like exhaust 150? Uh, two days, one day, I have seen people sharing the seats of uh, from entertainment joints. So someone in a single night, him and uh, the friends have spent over 250. So, but in most cases, when we have talked about things, especially in online spaces, we say 150 in the next that year as we'll have 3.5, you say like, what will be the purchasing power of, the product you could purchase 150 today and probably uh, in the next 30 years. And we have said the fixed income fund is not the only option. You have so many options, like you can opt to go purchase two pieces of land. You can opt to go for a bond. You can opt to go for a fixed income fund. And we have said whatever it is that you settle on. So today you say, let me settle on this kind of investment. Whatever it is that you settle on, uh, let it be based on your investment goals. So we have different personal finances, personal, so much. And we have different desired outcomes that we want in regards to finances. So someone uh, on this session, they have a job tenure. So even if they lost their job, they would have to be compensated. So that person does not have an issue with uh, future incomes. So whatever investment they have today, even if they picked an investment that matures in the next 20 years, they will just be comfortable, okay? Then there's another individual who doesn't have a job tenure, their job can add any time. So the investment they pick should have some aspect of liquidity so that if I check out, I'm able to get my money back and be able to sustain life. So this is not the only option. There are so many options and we'll be talking about those in the uh, uh, in subsequent slides. So 
we have talked about this and uh, some of these dangers, we have seen them. Uh, one time, I think I reviewed the data of like spot betting in this country and uh, other investment options. And uh, okay, I'm not, I have said that um, if we are betting, we bet for luxury to pass time, it is not uh, something that we actually want to get addicted to because this would have uh, some bad effect. But uh, this would be the best example of the microwave mentality. So I put in a hundred shillings and I win the jackpot 300 million, then I'm home and dry. Uh, <clears throat> this is something that uh, we want to avoid so much because as I said, we have looked back at some of these things, like these schemes that have come up, public likes and all Amazon workers and all these kind of stuff that have come up. And we have seen that we have continued to lose money. So isn't it the right time for us to acknowledge that well, uh, this is, broken, it is not working. Like seeking instant results is not working. So putting in 4,000 and expect 200%, uh, 300, 500% is probably no longer going to work. So can we agree maybe to change focus? Because as I said, we cannot continue doing the same old thing and expect different results. There's the danger of quick wins which will say again, you sacrifice the long-term potential. So this 500 that was lost by someone I know, it is something that has a long-term potential. So that was 150,000, which is going to 3.5 million. 450,000 in the next 13 uh, years, that would grow to around 10.5 million. So sacrificing, the 500 for the quick win and the chances, the probability of losing it is so high and I sacrificed the long-term potential. So I have sacrificed uh, 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 10.5 million in the next 30 years for trying to get 500 growing today instantly. So some of, the things that we want to look at and consider so that, uh, uh, as I said, we give ourselves chances. So thank you to Felista because I got to meet Alfred Madhu. So Alfred Madhu is also in this part of, uh, space uh, and he's talking about retirement planning and whatever. So we had invited Alfred Madhu to a session, a group that I belong in, uh, people who are just looking to get better financially. So we had invited the mother to come to talk as, to us about retirement, like how best can we plan for our retirement? And uh, I actually brought uh, this uh, with his name because I really liked this concept. So, and I hope we all pick this. So we have three individuals here. So we have a wise investor. There is a second investor who we don't give a name. And there is also a third investor who we won't give a name, because, but the first one is a wise investor. So as I said, uh, the average age of anyone in this uh, space will just take an average of 30 years. So what of this individual says, I invest 100,000 every year for the next 10 years. And you put uh, in a fund that is earning you 10% and we compound that annually. So by age 40, after contributing for 10 years, this individual let's says, okay, leave it. Let that stay, have done enough. That individual, by the time they ask T, where they have left 1.7, by the time they were leaving, they contributed 1 million. By the time they were leaving, after 10 years, they had accumulated 
But by the time they are going for the year retirement, after leaving the year 1.7 for the last, if they are retiring at T, they have 11.7. So they start at that one and they stop at 40 or they get into something else. So at 40, yeah, the kids are going to uh, college, high school. So all these contributions that I've been making should be channeled towards educating the kids and all that uh, stuff. So, but these ages, the age that we say, oh, life, yeah, I'm enjoying life before life starts at 40. So this age I can like uh, go visit the world and everything. So this is a hundred thousand per annum. And it is able to achieve that. Now look down that, uh, or use the same like uh, explanation to say like 100,000, that is less than 10,000 per month. And majority of us in this room are even able to do like 30,000 per month. So we are talking annually contributing 360,000. What net effect would that have by the time we are headed to retirement? And when I talked about contributing that thousand, I hope we see this, that um, that money market fund account that you have is meant to do that, help you accumulate. And I have shared this again and again in the group and I have said, we have seen most people talking about uh, money market fund accounts and you want to earn 15%, you want to earn above average returns. And at the same time, you want to uh, uh, have very minimal risks and you want to ask for your money and be able to achieve, get it back within no time. And we have said a little bit of ambitions. If you ask for more returns, then be, uh, be willing to put up with higher risks. So there is a trade-off. So I'll say my money market fund is meant for two things the emergency fund, so money that I need to access within a short notice. So I have said the person who works in Mombasa and they can get relocated the workplace from Mombasa to Nakulu, what would be the cost of relocating a five member family from Mombasa to Nakulu, the kind of house they need, uh, relocating the kids from schools and whatever, all that kind of stuff. So we are talking about 450,000 that transfer letter comes today and you are transferring in the next three months. Uh, what would you have to do? Would you have to borrow or what would you have to do? So your emergency fund is meant to cater for those and eventualities, that things that come, because we have said, okay, the pandemic might not come back, but you, we saw what happened with the pandemic that uh, People losing their jobs, even the most secure jobs that we thought about. Uh, people exhausting uh, their savings because we someone has saved some fifty thousand. The year previous pay a portion of it is what had been saved without thinking about an ideal emergency fund. So the emergency fund, I use the uh, I'm an market fund. I use that as an emergency fund due to the quick access of the money. So if you had an accident and your vehicle needs to be repaired, then you can check to your emergency fund and be able to sort that as you let the insurance company sort you. But the other beautiful thing that the money market fund is able to achieve for me is this 52 week saving challenge release that does for us. So the modest 20,000, you put in every month, 20,000. So you have said every month, I'm challenging myself to be able to save uh, 20,000. So in one year, you have 240. So today you sit down uh, with yourself and ask, where should I push uh, the 240? Probably in a contractual uh, uh, arrangement, maybe with an investment company, an insurance company, or a pension scheme. You put in that amount there. So we have those pensions that are voluntarily on that fund, like I said, the income fund, so I can push my money from the money market fund into the fixed income fund. And 
I continued the second year. So for 10 years, 20,000 per month, I have 2.4, which will have earned me uh, some money. And then I leave that over a period of the next, uh, uh, up to by the time I'm 60 years, you see the difference. So there is a second investor who says, okay, at 41, life begins at 40, so I can start getting serious. So they contribute 100,000 for the next 20 years, but even by the time they are going for the retirement. So what they will have contributed is 2 million, though the year 2 million will only earn them around 6.3. This individual had contributed 1 million and it has earned them 11 million. The last individual who wakes up uh, from the slab, um, they are 50, I'm headed to retirement, they have been sleeping, and then they say, okay, small uh, wins. So they contribute for 10 years from age 51, they have contributed 1 million, and the much they could earn at 10% compounded annually, that is 1.7. I hope we see what cost of delays does. And apply this even into other aspects of life. So I will start a business, but the business environment right now is not okay. No single day has the business environment been okay because it is subjective. You bring in two people and they look at our investment space and they will tell you, ah, this is not the right time to get into investments. You let's bring in another person and they tell you, ah, this is the best time to get into these forms of investment. So the right time is subjective. It depends on who are we asking? Like, who are we asking? This is what makes this uh, very subjective. So maybe anybody uh, following up on this uh, session in the room or on Facebook, probably you can commit today. Uh, I like talking to the 23-year-old who just got started with the uh, job, the 26-year-old who delayed finding a job after graduation, who has been on internship, they have not had a proper income. And uh, right now they have uh, gotten a job entry level and they are earning 70,000 or 60,000. So a very modest uh, income, but they have, being able to save 60,000, I can spend 40,000 and be able to save 20,000. Just go, don't do many things. Go open a circle account or open them on the market fund account. Start doing uh, your contributions. The best thing is by the time you are in your second year contributing 20,000, you have 480, you have earned some interest, and you are wondering what to do with your 480. We have said, when the student is ready, the teacher always appears. So anybody who is getting started, don't do a lot of things asking so many questions. The, the question that you can ask today is, is this circle that I'm considering stable? If we tell you, yeah, it is stable, join, sign up, contribute the minimum required share capital, start your monthly contributions. Probably the best thing, uh, like check off uh, by, if you have an affiliation with your employer, uh, let it be deducted from your salary, or uh, if it is the money market fund or whatever other fund, probably you can stand, uh, you can set up a standing order, contribute that uh, religiously. The 26 year old, 20,000 per month, a year 240. By the time they are 36, we can as well ask them, now focus on raising kids, focus on taking kids to school, whatever you have contributed, let that take you to probably help you with your retirement or whatever. Like you have a fund that you can continue uh, working on to earn you uh, uh, this uh, money for your retirement and all these the stuff that you need probably in future. So there is, when we have talked about this, as I started, I talked about uh, 
behaviors and creating habits. I think I mentioned that uh, and Felista came in and said, yes, we can start by acknowledging that I have not been saving, I have not been investing. So there's something that probably uh, it is something new for lay to my system, I have not been doing it. Let me get started. So you are creating a new habit. And it is something that is possible to be done, creating a new habit. Think of the habits that you have, you, you are already doing. You wake up from the same side of the bed. You have a same morning routine. You blush, uh, clean yourself, you get yourself breakfast, same cup that you take your coffee with, same design of making your coffee and all this. Because human beings are habitual people. Unless you train your mind not to, because there are some habits that probably will need to cut and others that will need to learn. But today we talk about learning habits and the habit we want to learn is this of one year from today, uh, fluctuations in the market, investment markets or whatever, or people uh, um, like peddling numbers and all that, or at least calls and you lose your money, uh, or you slow down out of, I lost my job, so I have lost track for the six months. It is not something to make you lose that habit. So we talked about friction. So when you want to adopt new habits, and adopting new habits, especially with money, would mean cutting other habits. Yes, I want, uh, we have a digital economy. People are spending money online and they are vendors online who are making money from all this. So we acknowledge that. Uh, uh, but if our purchase is in pass, and uh, we purchase stuff that we might not even need. So we have found impasse buyers who I get a nice dress or I get a nice gaming console. So I purchase and then it was not within my plan. So it is detrimental to my long-term plan. So how much? Uh, probably 5,500. And I was meant to contribute 20,000 towards my saving goals. So maybe probably I will contribute less. And if I'm not able to push 20, something tells me, well, you have already made the mistake. Probably you can start again next month. So learning these habits, like uh, doing these challenges, saving every month, every week, would come with cutting some habits that are not helping you to achieve whatever it is that you have set to achieve. And some of these habits like impasse buying and other habits that we know are detrimental to our finances, then uh, we would have to cut the old habits, learning the new habits. As I said, there is friction. We, we as human beings, we don't like something that is outside the norm, like outside our routine. So I uh, have always encouraged people who are coming to a personal finance classes have said that uh, whatever habit that you are doing today, probably uh, is a good habit. It is something just good that uh, you intend to do. Uh, like I have been doing, I have uh, be going out for movies. I have been hanging out. So I said that you don't want to punish yourself because anytime we feel we are being punished, we tend to reject whatever it is that we wanted to do. And uh, as I said, this personal finance, we have had to encompass many, uh, bring in uh, many uh, uh, aspects. So uh, one of my good teachers, that is Jordan Peterson, says that, um, well, I want to get better and I'll create a schedule. And this schedule, and if you are looking better to get, looking to get better financially, probably you'd have a financial plan. 
So whether it is the schedule to plan your day or the financial plan to plan your finances, the best thing would be incorporating these things that you call rewards into your schedules. So for him, he is talking about, oh, I have spent the whole day playing computer games. Probably I can start reducing the rewards. So I'll say, okay, six hours of work, probably of training, of work, I get myself a job, or I learn a skill online or something that I want to get better. And then two hours, one hour, that minutes of this, what I call a reward. So the same thing with our finances. So you don't cut like going out for movies completely. What you do is how much do I want to, what do I want to achieve? We would work with better with goals. So I want, a, I want to set up an emergency fund. How much do I need to save towards an emergency fund? These amounts in the next four months. And then what I do is I include a reward. So this year, I want to achieve two goals. I want to pay off the debt and I want to set up the emergency fund and get it to, to an ideal uh, size. So what I'll do is I set up the emergency fund and when it is achieved, I set aside some 20,000. I go to all Pajeta, have my fund and I'm back. And I get to uh, ping off the debt. Again, when I have achieved that, I reward myself probably a holiday or something of the sort. So that whatever it is that you have been spending your money on, uh, you don't feel that you are punishing yourself. Like, getting better financially doesn't mean feeling to hang out, doesn't mean feeling to eat out, doesn't mean feeling to take your kids uh, for a vacation or your family for a vacation, because if you don't, then what we start bringing in is like resentment feelings, we are just stay at homes, uh, stay at home family that doesn't even hang out. You need an avenue to release all this pleasure. So uh, this is something that uh, really encouraged. So I, I have, I have, I have uh, said that uh, whatever it is that you focus on investing, you you are not limited. Like, or well, Camilo has been talking about capital markets investments. Like you go for a bond, you go for a fixed income fund or a money market fund, or you purchase these shares or those other shares. Not really. The thing that we have encouraged is whatever option you decide to go into, just do your due diligence. And they had mentioned the circle. Circles are very good because especially if the, it is affiliated with your employer, then we automate, like that is deducted to your salary, this becomes very ideal. So if you're contributing towards the fixed income fund or the money market fund, again, you set up a standing order so that you automate that. You're able to get to your goals faster and quicker uh, uh, as you would have wished to. So do you want to get into real estate? What is the safest way to get into it? And it makes so much sense to consult with experts within that uh, area that you are pursuing. So if you want to get into real estate, just talk with an expert in that area. If you are looking forward to uh, going to capital markets, consult with an expert with that area. But I have said the person who is getting started today, the circle, the money market fund, uh, if you're looking forward to investing for a longer period, uh, like the company you are investing with, the money market fund, CIC or uh, NCBA, they still have a fixed income fund. So you would just talk to them and tell them, okay, uh, this money market fund, I think I have a longer outlook like the next three years. So let me move my money there. So we have so many of those options. We have new funds that are coming up. So uh, it is you to get yourself educated in those. Um, just for a minute, I want to go back to a lesson we had talked about, about diversification. So it is not about 1 million 
in bonds, I earn interest and I continue putting back that 1 million in those bonds. So I might not end up with a very diversified portfolio. So yeah, because we have said the like compounding effect. So I earn interest from the bond and I put back in the bond. Uh, there is also the principle of diversification. What we encourage is uh, 1 million in fixed income, whether it is a fixed deposit with your bank paying you 9% or 1 million in a bond paying you 14% or 15%, then the interest that you earn from it, you will invest that. If you do that, what happens is you will have taken advantage of compounding e uh, effect whether you have invested back in the same asset class or another asset class. So I say, the, or we can take an example here, 1 million in a bond paying 14%, you have 140. So you are a member of whatever circle you belong to, or you have this account with whatever collective investment scheme uh, company that you are putting your money at. So you earn interest from the board and you'll invest this back money either in the stock market or in the circle shares or you invest in uh, the money market fund or a fixed income fund or any other fund for that matter. Or you go offshore and invest that money. So what you have done is you have diversified and at the same time, you have given yourself uh, chances to earn more from that uh, uh, fixed income. Note, uh, I just want to give this one example. 100,000 in a bond that pays 14% gives you 14% annually. If you invest back the 14,000 in a share that pays you a modest return, whether it is a circle share or a listed company that gives you a modest dividend yield of 10%, we have what now in the second year, we have 114,000. So, the rate of return of that, because we have 14,000 and 1,400 from the 14,000 from the interest, whatever we make, that is 15,400. If you consider the initial investment, already our rate of return is at around 15.4. So I've seen most people when we have shared and said, okay, you can make like 17%, 18%. So many people interested in that. but it is not something that is achievable overnight. You would have to take advantage of compounding and also uh, match that with diversification uh, so that you're able to achieve uh, those goals that you are interested to. So uh, it is mine. So uh, we'll come to the end of that particular session. And uh, we'll take now the questions that uh, you people have. Uh, Felista, uh, yeah questions from the page, uh, I think uh, uh, from the chat room, I can uh, uh, see, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, no questions. Yeah, okay, Felista, go ahead. Uh, there are some, just let me retrieve, but if you have one from Zoom, you can also uh, look at it. Okay, okay. As I retrieve the one that had come through, there's someone who's asking mm -hmm. about shares. So maybe briefly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can talk about that. Let me just get the okay. actual question. Okay, no problem. Uh, those in the room, if you have a question, you can um, like share in the chat box. Those on Facebook, if you have a question, now uh, we have a few minutes uh, to take your questions. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this from Atara. So I guess she's new in investment because she a friend told her to save with a certain investment bank. So she was asking who has heard of them or invested with them. And then mm -hmm. she said she'd want to invest in shares mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then asked apart from shares, given that inflation is high, which is the best way you can advise. Okay. So I feel like she has some three issues there. Mm -hmm. A friend mm -hmm. telling mm -hmm. her use this, Nini, 
this investment mm -hmm. bank or broker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how do you choose like which broker to go with? A few pointers mm -hmm. on that. And maybe mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. few pointers on investing in shares. Mm -hmm. And a few pointers on how to get started. Should you start with shares? Should you, like, what basics do you get started with? Okay, okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Atala, for your question. Uh, uh, now, my hope that um, the investment bank, yes, we have investment banks, so many of them in Kenya. So you are a popular banker has an investment arm. So a company that is wholly owned by your bank uh, and it is doing investment banking. Are you banking with KCB? They have KCB capital. Are you banking with equity? They have equity uh, investment. Are you banking with NCBA? They have an investment bank. And the business that this investment bank does, so we have standalone, like Day and Blair, Faida, all those, uh, but we have those that are affiliated with uh, financial institutions, that is banks. So the business that the investment bank, bank is on, number one, is they have a license for stock brokerage. Like they can purchase shares for you from the stock market, that is one. The other thing is they have a license for an investment bank by Capital Markets Authority and Central Bank to get bonds from primary market from Central Bank and sell to the year shareholder to the year customers. So if you are a customer of the, any of those investment banks, you'll always every other time find an email telling you that we have this bond on offer. So they got that bond from the primary market from central bank and they are selling for, to you. So those two offer links would be related, will be offered to you as a customer of an investment bank. So right now we have seen them venturing out. So when it is an institution that has uh, an investment banking license, they can go for another license to be able to provide something else. We have an investment bank in here in Kenya who have gone for a license to be a money manager. So this broadens the scope of business. So being a money manager, they set up a fund, they put in money, they collect your money, you the individual investors, and they invest this money on your behalf and they are investing in uh, shares locally and offshore, they're investing in uh, 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 Forex and all those, they have fixed income. So depending on, so we could be having uh, an investment bank who is just doing shares and selling new bonds. This is another person who has gone for a uh, license and they are offering, uh, uh, pulling your money together and investing it on your behalf. So we have so many. So this comes to the point of understanding the product offering that you're being offered. And we have seen this especially with insurance companies again. So what you find is an insurance company offers you an insurance product. The same company has registered a collective investment scheme. So they offer you products such as money market fund. They offer you products such as fixed income funds and so many other uh, funds because they even have an equity fund that is investing in shares. So the same company uh, has several funds. So you would find again, uh, uh, this same insurance company has product that are pension like because they have been regulated to offer that. So. Number one, if you are going the investment bank way, you would have to understand whatever product it is that you are investing in, it is being offered at the heart. If you are purchasing shares, then they are licensed to like purchase shares on your behalf. So in the investment bank, they have even financial advisors who will just come and tell you probably this is how you need to order your finances, blah, blah. But we all know that they they have an inclination. So if uh, they will tend to give you advice that pushes you towards that corner. So 
as we usually have said, even when I give you advice, please get to get a second and third opinion because my opinion would be inclined towards a certain angle depending on my affiliation. So let's assume you want to purchase shares through an investment bank. So for you, whatever entity that you need to consider to purchase your shares of listed companies that are publicly quoted, what you need to do is number one, to make sure that that investment bank or the stock broker is licensed by the Capital Markets Authority. So if you visit, just go to your browser and type list of licensees, CMA. List of licensees, CMA. These will give you all the list of approved institutions that can do investment banking or stock brokerage. So number one, getting a regulated entity, dealing with, an, uh, with a regulated entity. The reason being, there are so many masculaders outside there, uh, people who want to behave like uh, they know what they are doing, but they don't. Uh, then the other thing, if you are looking forward to invest in shares, how do you settle between one entity, entity to another? There's the issue of service reliability reliability of the platform and reliability of the information that the broker sends you. So the broker being in this trade, you are not able to keep up with the news research and whatever. So the broker being in this trade should always like update you weekly after the end of the month, they send you research telling you the economy and the markets, how they are doing. So reliability of the information, the news and research they give you, reliability of the platform. We belong to different banks, number one. And the reason why Felista is banking with that bank, I know which is so expensive, is because she doesn't want to queue. She, she appreciates good customer service. So she wants to part away with something extra uh, in terms of fees. And myself, because I want to save on cost, I want free services, then I will have to queue at the bank. So the same thing happens with these brokers. Someone charges you and they give you very reliable, a very reliable platform and services, and some charging you a higher fee. And someone is giving you a discount on the fees, but the kind of service they offer you is not very good. So we have avoided to name names of course, because uh, these people are in business. But what we have encouraged people to do, when you have gone to the list of uh, licensees and you have seen the entities that are listed there that you can purchase shares with, uh, something you can consider doing is coming to a group like 52, whether uh, you with your name or anonymously, and ask, which brokerage firm are you people using? What we call that is seeking reviews. Uh, so all these majority of these brokers have um, uh, apps that you're able to download and trade shares with. Just go to Google Play Store or like App Store and check the reviews that have been left in regards to that entity. Because majority of us will give reviews. We say what it is that we have like you people are not quick to respond to my inquiries or I'm having this issue or there's this delay when I'm putting my order or you are uh, funding processes are a little bit difficult. So seek review before you even settle on a service provider. So that is something that you can consider. So now you, they are registered, you have thought reviews, they are reliable, then you open an account, you can just contact them checking their website and contact them through their official email. Tell them you want to open an account, a share brokerage account, and you are good to go. So when the account is ready, fund your account and we start purchasing our initial shares. We have asked so many people, which share do you want to purchase and why? So someone says, I would want to purchase shares of Safaricom Limited, uh, because they launched into Ethiopia, okay? Someone else says, I would want to, to purchase shares of this business or the other business. But majority of us, we look at outside 
things, majority of us are told by individuals. Like I come and I review this particular company and I say this is a recommend buy. So your broker sends you an email and says, this is a recommend buy for this particular share. And this is the only basis we apply in purchasing a particular share. So we probably don't know how to analyze the share performance over the last probably five years and the potential that there is on this share in the next two, three years. Because we, we have the new age of the influencer. And interestingly, it is this influencing thing is not being done today. Anyone who is interested in leading these things, okay, I will lead because I'm, I'm selling uh, knowledge. Um, there is a book written by Benjamin Graham that is The Intelligent Investor, a book talking about the 1980s, 1990s, and is talking about people who own magazines, publications, being paid by Wall Street to push an agenda. So we are talking about this kind of company has a potential. So there's someone who has paid this. So I would encourage, don't follow what I tell you, this company is a recommend by right now, but get to understand the basis on what I'm, uh, I'm saying that. If we get started on shares, we have a four hour session to teach people on shares. And still <laughs> it is a four hour session and uh, assignments and take away assignments to help people to go continue making research. So if you get started on shares, I think we cannot add this. And um, we'll get to talk about a paid course that helps you navigate on everything that there is in regards to investment in the Kenyan context. So let me not uh, take more time on the shares, but I would encourage yeah. Atala to, to come to our class and learn. True. Uh, Atala, yeah, I would encourage you. It's not something we can cover in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a September class coming up. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're able to attend or plan mm -hmm. to attend. Organize yourself to attend an upcoming class. Uh, mm -hmm. Wakamiru put that slide for the 150k. Delphine here is not believing. He says, <laughs> wait, wait. If I put 150k now without any top-ups for the next 30 years, that will earn me approximately 3.5 million when all factors are held constant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Delphine, <laughs> yes, that is, you can do the math. <laughs> if you do not believe <laughs> at 11% uh, interests compounded semi-annually for 30 years, you're not even adding any money. Yes, you will get that amount. That's the power of compound interest. And if you add more, then you have more money on it because you earn interest upon interest upon the capital. Uh, Molly Vihenda is also asking about interests. Uh, so she's asking, so we need to continue plowing back our interest for us to get the compounding effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Molly, Molly, yes, Molly, yes, Molly, yeah, you got that right. Um, and I, I hope uh, everybody saw what uh, the slide on uh, I think uh, th that was someone else. Um, this, where you have invested just a hundred without touching annually, and you invest for ten years, and leave that, continue doing something else. At by the age sixty, you have like eleven point seven million at ten percent compounded annually. So the idea is, I have this because most of us we don't have a fortune. Like, yeah, of course I don't have. Uh, 50 million. I would want 50 million because if I had 50 million, I would allocate where I'm able to get uh, some good interest yearly. But what we have had to do is building this gradually. So every month putting something aside. So yeah, we want to leave that uh, uh, 
interest so that we earn this compounding interest. I know where Molly is coming from because Molly has been to our personal finance classes. Is she, you take a board, for example, uh, 500,000, you can decide to compound, probably it was a 15 year bond or 17 year bond. You can decide to put in uh, that, plow back the interest for half the years, maybe 7.5. And then the other 7.5, you can now continue earning, uh, you can continue enjoying uh, the interest, maybe consuming it. But when we start, probably the best thing would be uh, like plowing back these interests. And not only plowing back in the same investment, even plowing back in other investments so that we uh, get the diversification aspect. Yes, Molly. Great. I hope uh, you sorted Molly. Uh, then there's Rita who is asking, you mentioned a bond fund in your presentation. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know whether it's preferable to invest directly with CBK or buy a bond fund. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. I have had investors of bond funds in mm -hmm. um, two companies complaining of getting statements reflecting a loss. Where would mm -hmm. this be given that the government has defaulted in repaying or has not defaulted, sorry, in mm -hmm. repaying its loan obligations? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Um, that's so much for your question. And uh, I don't want to do it with the companies that you have mentioned because I have not seen the, your statements. I would gladly wish anybody would go to Wakamilo Facebook and send me a statement. You can hide your name and everything. Send me a statement either from uh, any of those two companies that have reflected a loss. But now I'll talk about a company, not mentioning names, that I have seen their statements and I will say what transpired in the, like people uh, losing money. And this is not something very new, uh, please note. It is something that has been happening uh, even in the past, like uh, we have seen that. So the person you give your money to invest on your behalf, and this answers your first question later. Should they invest directly with the central bank or should they uh, give someone this money to invest on my behalf? Now, for most of us, the reason why we decide to give someone money to invest on our behalf is because if we are to invest directly, it comes with, learning, knowing the various type of investments so that today you have earned some interest from the government bond. They have sent that money to your bank. Where do you invest that money? So you need to learn and how to invest just as a fund manager would invest. The other thing, discipline. And <laughs> someone said that if there's something that we struggle with, is discipline as Kenyans, financial discipline, and we tend to change goalposts. So you would take a bond, a five-year bond, two years down the line, then someone comes with the next big thing in terms in regards to investment, and you want your money back to invest in whatever. And this is why you have had so many cases of default in insurance. So someone is saying, let me contribute for the next 10 years so that I can have money for whatever goal that they have. Two years, three years down the line, they want to change their goalpost. So they want to invest into something else. So this is not really impressive. So yes, you can invest all by yourself. One, if you learn how to invest like a fund manager and get to understand the various uh, uh, investment options that you have so that you have earned interest, you go for shares. Then you have earned interest, you go for a fund, you have earned interest. Then for you or someone who wants to go to a fund manager, then you would have to put up with that uh, the fund manager, depending on how they allocate their money, depending on how they invest their money, because this is again subjective. We have a fund manager at company ABAC. We have a fund manager at XYZ. So like 
if me and Felista were fund managers, Felista is so conservative and Felista would not want to lose people's money. So I know Felista would be very conservative in terms of allocating her money. So Felista is a fund manager and you have placed 2 billion under her care. So some portion of that money, they maintain in a demand deposit so that if anyone wants to check out, they can get that money. Then some other money she places in fixed deposit account with commercial banks. There's depositors insurance and the commercial banks are regulated by CBK. So she knows this is safe. Some money in several types of government securities, short term and long term, just making sure that she has a very diversified profile. And then there comes me who is trying to pay the highest possible rate of return to my investors so that I can get others of you joining me. So Felista is paying 9% and I want to pay 12%. I want to pay 13%. So what do I invest in so that I pay this high interest rate? So Felista has, you have not had her have shares in her allocation. You have not had her have corporate bonds in her allocation. I have not had her have commercial papers in her location because those three are high risk and fund managers in this country are investing in them despite two fund managers losing a large portion of investors' money with the same thing if it is what I'm thinking has happened where you find the fund manager takes money and invests probably let's just take 20% and invest in a corporate bond. So if the corporate bond defaults or I have purchased shares and the shares drop in price, so what we do is the fund shrinks by that portion or whatever we have lost. And then what happened is you as the investor who have put your money in my fund and my fund has shrunk, I will deflect that in your net present value, like how much have you invested with us? 20,000. So we'll deduct, our fund has shrunk with 5%. So we'll, de we'll deduct with that. So two, three funds have had that issue in Kenya in regards to corporate bonds. So, okay, we are not mentioning names because there is a court case already uh, and I don't want to like uh, ask people to contribute to <laughs> all the fees that are defending court just for mentioning names but if a fund manager goes high list then I think this is something that uh, look at so it is it is not enough for you to say okay I want to invest in a board fund from which company ABX it is not enough ask for what we call a fund fact sheet and ask where I want to see in this fund fact sheet, where have you invested the amount of the money that you have? Look at the asset allocation. I've said it is subjective because you can tell who is more exposed than the other. So if Felista has 2% of her assets under management in corporate bonds, which are high risk, and I have 40% of my assets under management in corporate bonds, which are high risk, then it tells you Felista, if we were to lose, Felista would lose 2% and I would lose 40%. So you are an investor. You have placed your money with us. Where would you lose more? So would it be safe to go for government bonds directly? Do you have the discipline that it takes to put your money for in an investment that is going for seven years and waiting and reinvesting this money back? in other asset classes, it is okay. If not, you can go for a fund, not only a bond fund, there are several funds by those companies, just get to understand them and do your due diligence before you settle on a fund. Uh -huh. uh, Felicita, maybe another question? Okay, uh, I'm uh, muted. No problem. <laughs> I was saying Rita is grateful for the insightful answer and Molly mm -hmm. too says thank you. Uh, and mm -hmm. someone wants to see the, the, the slide on by Alex. Uh, Alfred, sorry. Not, uh, okay, yes, okay. Okay. Yes. Here, 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 here. 
Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. perhaps. Mm -hmm. mm. And Atara is also grateful for a query well answered. Okay. And she plans to join the class. So uh, you, you could talk about the class for those who are not aware of it. Okay, let me talk about the class uh, as we come to the end of that session. So everybody, we have a paid class where, um, yes, I teach uh, in regards to personal finance. So it is a nine day, day session where we talk about several uh, concepts of finance. Uh, personal finance, and then we introduce you to several options that you have when you're investing in uh, that is in Kenya. So the first day we'll talk about uh, personal finance, will you do your budget, uh, will you create a secondary source of income, uh, how do you do sustainable borrowing and debt management, because um, Felista, I just want to tell you this, that uh, if you look at majority of our anonymous Pause. Hmm. They are in regards to debt or something else that people don't want to talk about openly. Yeah. But yeah. one thing there is we are one generation that is so indebted and we don't want to talk about it. We are so much in debt, we are addicted, and we don't want to talk about it because some of these things are shameful and whatever. So I would encourage anyone, uh, come, let uh have a very honest conversation we don't have very large classes so uh it is a safe place where people get to open up and we are not recording the classes and you don't know that your neighbor next so you don't even have a problem we can <laughs> talk about that because <laughs> yeah we have seen the majority of us don't even know how to sustain a bubbling looks like so we mm. then learn about unit trust so you only know about money market funds probably you're out there but uh these are provided by companies known as collective investment schemes, and uh, there are several funds like bond funds. We have new funds that are coming up, mutual funds. We have funds that are investing in other asset classes. So it is just okay to come and get that experience. Then we'll talk about tertiary bills and bonds, uh, how to go about them safely. We have corporate bonds, and then a very important session on the stock market because majority of the people who have lost money in the stock market have followed long advice. And the second thing, they have been impatient. So you have seen these people buying high, selling low because of impatience. You don't know even who pushed the price low, what it is that they are trying to achieve. So we teach the best uh, um, strategies to approach uh, uh, the stock market and also like make sure you diversify. And we have an introduction to what we call exchange traded funds because uh, this is like where the world is going. So instead of like uh, investing in single stocks, you invest in a basket that is already diversified. So we have uh, a session on emerging trades, late real estate investment trust. They are about to become very popular. So two companies listing, uh, we have a company listed already and many more that are coming up. So in most cases, investors have these uh, uh, buyers in regards to IPOs. Should they purchase the shares of this company in its IPO now that it is a real estate investment trust? And I'll tell you the new age of the influencer. Whatever the influencer is telling you in regards to real estate investment trust, there is something that I would encourage you to ask. Number one, we have said, especially with the real estate trust, costs associated with related parties, the fund manager, the trustee, the custodian, and the property manager. What is the portion of that, the cost, the portion to the overall cost? Because someone will set a business and then they are there to pay themselves, to earn mm -hmm. money for themselves at mm -hmm. the expense of uh, the investors. Also, in real estate investment trust, there's something else that we have encouraged people to look at. And I have talked about this in so many of my posts. And it is what the uh, Harvard Business Review called accounting light minds that you should always watch out when the accountants prepare financial statements. I have been an accountant. 
we can report profits where we want one to be. And there was no profit, but we can profit report a profit uh, if we want it to be there. So in regards to real estate trust, something you consider there. And we have uh, introduction to money managers. These products are coming up and we are talking about them in class. Then we do security analysis and due diligence, investment diversification and risk management. So the fee for the nine days, the session nine days is 5,000. Uh, so you can like book uh, your place in our upcoming September class uh, by paying uh, the 5,000 to 972,700, that is pay bill, and the account number is 1115. You can still WhatsApp me if you have like uh, any question regards and, uh, to that. And my, that is my number 0758-0079-79. A WhatsApp message will do. Our September class starts on 4th of September and ends in 22nd of September. So three days a week, uh, a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday, uh, unless the participants agree to maybe reschedule a day, the, depending on, uh, on uh, the uh, whatever, then we have that. So you can sign up for this class. Uh, we had another session. We offered a free session to the, our followers and we talked about uh, offshore. And uh, there's something uh, someone noted in the group and said that uh, most, we have not understood the local investments, probably that's going to offshore would be taking in too much. And uh, yes, uh, we are not limited. Like you are paying Netflix, uh, you, you are using Gmail, you are paying a domain to Google, uh, Alphabet, the company. What would limit you invest in that company? Like if it, this would give you uh, an opportunity. But uh, going single stocks for everybody looking for to go offshore uh, is a little bit of work. So if you want to invest in Google, Tesla, all those other companies is a little bit of work. So there is a course, a two-day course that is coming up. Um, uh, you can hold up me on this number to inquire in regards to that. And we'll purposely look at mutual funds and exchange tradable funds uh, that is offshore. And it is so practical to help you get started. And uh, we have proposed that uh, these are safer instead of going offshore and starts trading the high risk asset classes. So this is something that uh, if you, one is interested can do. Uh, it is always a pleasure to do this uh, for this particular uh, community. Uh, we host these free sessions for everybody to learn because we want to improve the financial literacy. And then the paid classes come in for someone maybe seeking further knowledge or they want uh, personalized attention. So Felista. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. Remember, like, if you need, you know, more details, yeah? You find that in this open class, we may not, discuss everything with the uh, with regards like you see shares is a whole session on itself with so many topics as you've seen even uh on the course outline that our Camero has shared like we could not discuss all those about uh nine things nine eight nine things today in this session but when you go to the class, you're able to, excuse me, you're able to go deeper into it. You're able to ask your questions. Anything you don't understand, you can be vulnerable. There is no shame in not knowing. Yeah, you can ask all your questions and you will get the answers. And you will get to understand so many things from a point of knowledge. So that I remember even... Alia uh, Wakamiru talked about the ignorance or illiteracy is what makes people hesitant even to start and you know to take action and is also what makes people even get into these get rich quick scams because you know they make it look very easy <laughs> and you feel uh -huh. like you don't have uh, to do much you don't have to learn anything you just give them your money and earn 
500%. And then you later come and talk about how you are defrauded. And I know a lot of people have lost so much money that if that money went to the right investment product, it would be earning them so much more and they would be further along on the journey towards their goals. So take uh, time to join the class starting on 4th. Uh, Wakamiru has shared the number there, WhatsApp 0758007979. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, if you're not able to make it for the September one, uh, there will be October. So plan for that. That money you put in, yeah? Wakamiru even talked about investment is even more than just, you know, buying bonds or putting it in uh, the stock market or buying shares and land and all that. Investing in your knowledge so that you can make these decisions, yeah? A lot of time we find people asking questions which by attending such a class, you won't have to rely. My friend is the one who said I should do this without even explaining why you should do it. You'll be able to understand and you'll be able, when a friend comes and tells you, let's put our money here, you'll be able to assess and know uh, this is either a good deal or it's not a good deal because you will be acting from a point of information. So it is so important to have that information to make decisions with. So I hope uh, to see lots of you in the class and I, I we get so many testimonies for people who come into the class. So please make sure you attend. If not September, some of you may be ready for September. Remember the cost of delay. Yeah? If you're ready for mm -hmm. September, please get right in. Uh, if you're not ready for September, organize yourself and make sure that in October you're in that class. You're in the waiting list for the October class so that you can get the information, you can have the confidence to invest based on a point of information and not hearsay. So thank you so very much, everyone who joined us here. Uh, thank you so much, Wakamiru. I'm telling you, there were so many gems. I have even been unable to summarize because I might end up repeating the session. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> the video is available in the group. And uh, Wakamiru will also have the video probably by tomorrow. And uh, yeah, the, yeah, and yeah, for those who are possibly not in 52 weeks, yeah, there will be a video on Wakamiru's channel for you to catch up in case you need to. I know some people need to go back to that 150K slide and others want to go to the cost of delay slide. So if you need to go back there until you believe, uh, yeah, the videos will be available later. So thank you all for joining us. I hope you have learned one thing, two things, of course, about why you should not delay anymore and something else that you know you have picked i have picked a million things but yeah i hope you have picked something that will help your journey as you work on your financial goals so thank you everyone have a good night i will meet again at another time asante asante, asante thank you and good night everybody <laughs>